How's it going? We're stressed. <laughs> So I'm kind of living in my pink era right now. And when my friend Whitney messaged me that she wanted to make one of those 2020 Selkie inspired puff sleeved gowns. I say gown, but dress is really more of an appropriate term. I immediately knew what fabric I wanted to make mine out of. I have this pink starry organza that I've absolutely been hoarding and it's time to put it to use. Now is the perfect time to cut into it and try it out. I kind of picked the dress pattern at random, but like how hard can it be? Because like there are so many puff dresses on Etsy right now and this is just the one that I picked. I didn't know this at the time but this pattern comes with a YouTube tutorial that takes you step by step for how to make the dress and I followed it as closely as possible. 10 out of 10 do recommend. And Whitney should be here any minute. I don't want to keep you waiting. In this house we craft in pajamas. Let's get to it. I started working on this dress the night before so I printed out the whole pattern and started cutting it out because I know myself and I know that if I don't prep this in advance it'll take me three times as long to do it the next day. And because my friend Whitney was coming over I I wanted to make sure that everything was ready by the time she got here. I started ironing all of my fabric and yes, this took forever. And then I got a text from Whitney saying that she was running a little bit late and would be about two hours later than we'd planned, which honestly was fine with me because I kind of wanted to get all of my pieces cut out and ready to go before she even got there. Because full disclosure, even though I told her I was 100% capable in helping her make this dress, I had never made this dress before. I had never even looked at the pattern before the night before. So here I am up in my sewing loft just frantically trying to understand the pattern, trying to understand the sizing, watching all the videos that I can on this specific puff dress. And lucky for me, there is a ton of tutorial content on specifically this kind of selkie looking dress because do you guys remember when the pandemic happened and everybody was obsessed with these selkie dresses? I too was obsessed, but number one, I couldn't get any fabric at the time. And number two, I kind of thought that this pattern was gonna be more difficult than it actually is because the puffy sleeves really intimidated me. Whitney is finally here. I'm gonna go get the door for her. Oh my gosh, there she What? Hi. Whitney, what are you doing? You know that in this house we craft in pajamas. I got him right here. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's Whitney in pajamas. <laughs> Whitney originally thrifted a curtain to use for this dress, but it was still wet from when she washed it that morning, so we threw it in my clothes dryer and started working on the lining layer first. She has sewn things before, but I felt like because I didn't really have a master grip on this pattern yet, we'd better start with the lining layer. That way she and I both get a little bit of practice with the pattern, and if it turns out super ugly, it would be okay because the lining layer would never see the light of day as it is on the inside of the garment. But then I felt a lot of pressure to execute these dresses to the best of my abilities because halfway through this sewing day, Whitney informed me that this was it wasn't just a fun project she wanted to do for fun, because she loves fun things, no. But that it was going to be her dress that she would wear for her upcoming engagement photos with her betrothed. So I start sweating because the pressure is kind of on and I'm kind of just making things up as I go. There were multiple times where I stopped sewing to watch a YouTube video on how to sew what I'm trying to sew. And I cannot recommend the This Is Kachi pattern and pattern tutorial enough. This Is Kachi is incredible and her instructions are easy to follow along with. I felt lucky that the pattern that I literally picked on Etsy at random included such an awesome tutorial video that was so clear and easy to understand. And just to give you a glimpse of what it's like to come over and sew something with me, here is a non-sped up, completely normal view of me in my natural habitat doing my best to help a friend. Yeah, so you want to make sure your underbust line is going this okay. way, underbust line is going this way. That's what we got then. Okay. And then this side seam goes like that. So you're gonna like pin all of these together and you're gonna sew them. Just pin and sew it. If only it were that easy. I really tried to stay one step ahead of Whitney so that I could have time to figure out the pattern and technique and then kind of digest the information so that I could show Whitney what to do and how to do it. The whole process was kind of like I learn sleeve and then sew sleeve and then I teach Whitney sleeve and then she sews sleeve. And honestly, the sleeves were the most difficult part because there's like this special technique where you have to like reach inside one and pull it out and it doesn't look like it's gonna work, but it totally does work and everything comes comes together and it's beautiful and exciting and then seeing someone else slowly realize that it is coming together is such a rewarding experience. I sew by myself most of the time and while I thrive in solitude, it was nice to catch up with an old friend. Soon Whitney will be moving out of the country to pursue a new life in Guatemala. And while I'm really excited for her in this new adventure, I'm also sad because my sister Whitney and I used to sew and craft together all the time. We would make cosplays and go to conventions and eat good food. And while each of us have chosen different paths in lives that have led us all apart from each other, it was nice 
to have at least one last crafting experience with Whitney before she moves away. We sewed the bodice together and then sewed the sleeves to the bodice and the bodice to the skirt. I'm not gonna recount every step of this process because there are way better tutorial styled videos on here and I'll just link the one I followed in the caption. But as it turns out, I like this silhouette enough that I'm planning on just drafting my own pattern next time I make a dress like this. That way it'll fit me exactly perfect. I got to a really good stopping point on my dress and I decided it was time to put my full focus and effort into helping Whitney finish hers because she leaves for Guatemala in four days and remember, she wants to wear this dress for her engagement pictures, so it was time to really step it up and get the dress finished. How's it going? We're stressed. <laughs> You're so close. We're stressed. You're so close to finishing. Mine's over there. To be fair, it's not finished either, but we're working on this. Once we started fitting the dress on Whitney's actual body, it was getting kind of late and it was kind of obvious that there was a lot of work left to do before it would be wearable, so we planned to work on it again the following day. I almost finished this dress yesterday, but when it starts to get kind of dark outside, I get really tired and I don't want to sew anymore and it's winter time here, so it gets dark at like 4.30, which is a crime, honestly. But Whitney should be coming over later today to finish her dress and I'm just gonna knock this bad boy out. Really all I have left to do is the zipper and the hem on it and then it's done and I'm really excited that it didn't even take that long couple of hours well okay let's get real it took like, like a full day it took a full day if i'd just been doing my own dress it probably would have only taken me like three or four hours but because i was helping whitney and we got sidetracked and had lunch it took a full day but all i have left to do on my dress is finish the zipper and then hem it and then it's done and again whitney i'll be over later today and hopefully we'll finish her dress as well i don't really install many zippers these days because they scare me but sewing this one into the pink poofy star dress reminded me that they really aren't that bad next i moved on to trimming up the hem and personal reminder next time i make a skirt like this i need to account for my shape a little bit better because my butt nearly hangs out the back of this dress i definitely wear a pair of dance shorts underneath it because it is a uh, scandal Link. And I'm not out here trying to show people my nether cheeks, my derriere extraordinaire, my- My mom watches these videos and I don't want to embarrass her anymore so I'll stop there. So I'm going for like a space cowboy Barbie look and this is the same wig that I wore for my Barbie- for my holiday Barbie look this Christmas. It's a little raggy but I'll brush it out and treat it and slap it on my head. It's fine honestly. And like these are the boots that I'm gonna wear. I won't lie, they are a little beat up. Like, look at the heels on that. I thrifted these for eight bucks a couple of years ago, and I have tripped in these boots more than any other shoe I own. But they're cute, so we're just gonna wear them. Besides, it's not like I'm gonna be like walking around all that much, right? We're just going to that little cafe. This is my makeup shirt. I wear it when I'm doing makeup for like cosplay and stuff because it has buttons on it. So I can just like unbutton it and take it off and then put my costume on so I'm not like taking this off over my head. But I do think it's funny because it at one time belonged to someone named Anderson. It's my shirt now and he donated it. I purchased it for like three bucks and it's my favorite shirt to get ready in. Also, um, these outrageous eyelashes, they're just like those little magnet kind. I kind of love them for photo shoots. So if I don't wanna do super heavy makeup, I just slap these bad boys on and from a distance, they don't look bad. Up close is a different story. They look like fans coming off my eyeballs up close, but from a distance, it's not bad. Real talk. I love this dress so much. I love that it's pink. I love that it's poofy. I love that I feel like a Barbie when I wear it. I know I'm not Barbie. I'm clearly Barbie's best brunette friend, Teresa. But just wearing this made me feel so cute and feminine and oddly petite. And I don't know why society has decided that feminine and petite go together because they totally don't. But because of the world that I grew up in, as a six foot tall woman that's like gifted athletically, I have always felt like this kind of a stuff was off limits for me. And that's outrageous because who doesn't want to look cute and poofy and frilly. I surely do and I always have wanted to and that's why I'm embracing this pink era. There are pink dresses, pink jackets, pink pants. Pink is just 
happening in my wardrobe right now. And honestly, same goes for this pink dress. This is the bow dress. I'll put the tag for the video, like the end of the video or something, but I feel so adorable when I wear these things. And it's something that I've never really let myself tap into. Growth is clearly happening somewhere, right? Like I for so long thought that I could only wear black because I needed to look like tall and sleek and like try to take up as little space as possible. This dress is poofy and big and gigantic and it's not the only big poofy gigantic dress that I've made as of late that I feel amazing while wearing. So I'm happy about that. And getting to craft with Whitney one more time before she leaves the country for who knows how long was such a fun, nice, and we gotta catch up and talk about all the things that have happened in our life in the recent months. This is how Whitney's dress turned out and I think her pictures are gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below if you like the video. And remember, in this house, we craft in pajamas.